Yo guys, Luffy back with another video. Today we're doing another Dire Mall East Warlock Jump Run Guide. This guide is a speedrun guide. That being said, a lot of the route is similar to other routes you've probably seen on YouTube or my route. And just to talk about the gold per hour a little bit before we get started. At worst, I've gotten around 75 gold per hour. I did a 10 hour test and on average, it was around 120 to 130 gold per hour depending on how much you sell the arcane crystals essence of water for it can be slightly more if you have your own alchemist i have an alchemist alt i wasn't counting transmuting but that can augment the gold per hour and i did manage to get a forest book i'm not going to count that because it's incredibly rare So we're going to enslave this first demon. At this point in the dungeon, there's multiple different options that can happen here. Uh, what just happened can happen. There's one demon. If that happens, you enslave it. If there's two demons, you enslave one and you use the enslaved demon to kill the other one. And usually what I do is I wait a few seconds while they're fighting and then I put an agony on the hostile one. And then I just run away and I st uh, start doing hydra spawn while they kill each other. The enslaved can break early, but in an ideal situation, they mostly kill each other. So here I'm just holding off because I, I want the enslaved to die before Hydra Spawn aggroes to me. And as you can see, the way I position myself, uh, he goes to the left. And I actually wanted that so I could get an extra cast. And if you jump on this pillar and then in the water, you can get a good angle for another Shadow Bolt. You can't always get it. it as you saw there, he geysered, so I had to stop casting. But well, it's just something you can do to min-max DPS a little bit on him. And now we're just going to juggle Hydra Spawn like we normally do. And as usual, you want to make sure you corruption the hydralings and then just juggle them. You don't really want to get knocked too much. You can, it's not deadly, but if you do end up getting knocked by either Hydra Spawn or the Hydralings, you really, really want to be in the water. Because if you get knocked in a bad direction on land, you're probably going to aggro one of the packs. And I see Hydra Spawn is getting kind of low, so I decided to start swimming over because I can't walk on land, so it's going to take a while. And the hope is that he geysers me closer to where we're going. And he ends up doing that here. Unfortunately, I turn the corner and get stuck on a candle, which leads me to getting dazed. So, we lost a few seconds, but nothing major. Now, as I talked about earlier, we got the option where there was only one demon in the beginning. So, more often than not, there's going to be two demons at this part. The one that I just enslaved and one in this hallway. If the demon is in the beginning of the hallway, around where I am now, you'd want to... Uh, pull aggro on it with the demon that you have and drag it up a bit the reason you'd want to drag it up is because if you leave it down there you're going to range the enslave and it's going to break really early so it's better when it's up here and then i just agony it when i'm about to turn the corner and i just let them kill each other again so i'm just going to pull zevram as normal and again we're jumping off this ledge because we didn't kill any of the trash so we really don't want to aggro when we jump down. And now we're just going to go back into the spot. Now while we're waiting for him to come down, a, another strategy that I have tried is pulling Zevram into Hydra Spawn. And it does save a little bit more time, but I, I found that the risk added with pulling both isn't worth the time saved. Because this isn't, you know trying to get the ultimate speed run it's trying to run it as fast as possible while also maximizing gold per hour if you wipe you're wasting time you're wasting gold per hour it's just not worth it and it would only save you maybe 30 seconds because when you have to juggle both bosses you have to be even more passive with things like immolate because you have to worry about sacrifice geyser because more often than not if you get geyser 
you're probably going to get sacrificed and then you wasted more time than you would have saved. So as you can see the enslaved broke but they were really low health. Uh, and I, I'm not sure at this point if one died or not. But we're barely going to have to deal with them. So we see one of the shadow stalkers rolls in 800 health. So presumably the other one is dead since they probably would have both been low health, so they both would have been slow. Now this is kind of unfortunate. I wanted him to die near the pillar, but for whatever reason he was fidgeting and then he just started running away, so we had to swim to him. And here I'm about to switch gear, so we now know that the other one is dead because not in combat. And we wanted to switch into our speed gear, aka Skull of Impending Doom and Nifty Stopwatch if it's up. Now we don't want to use the speed items before we talk to the tree or before the door is going to be open since that would just be a waste of time. And in this particular run, I choose not to herb anything. The two bottom herbs, you could herb, but I just didn't want to. It's kind of a waste of time. And this run, the point of this run is to do it as fast as possible so we maximize the amount of arcane crystals you get in an hour. And essence of water, glass books, all the, you know, boss drops, rich thorium veins. Um, if it had been better herb spots, I may have gone for it, but so if I went for this one, the the one to the right, I would have had to wait for this tree pat again, so it wouldn't have been worth it. And I popped the skull now. I know the door's about to open. Ends up being perfect timing. And I could have waited to pop this skull, but I actually want to get the cooldown rolling. We're going to use it later for the new strategy. So this room is where things get a little tricky and where pretty much all the time is saved versus a normal strategy. Now instead of jumping on this pillar to the right, we're just going to jump down on the railing a little bit farther down so we can see what the other two mobs are. They ended up being fell lashers. And I did have faster runs in this, but I wanted to show a run where I had multiple casters at this part just so that you could actually see what I do. And I'm going to end up popping a greater arcane protection potion. You don't have to with two, and with one I never do. It's just a little safer if you do it with two. With three, you definitely are going to have to use it. Now we're just going to juggle the boss as we normally do. We're going to keep him max range so we don't get any debuffs. And something to note is when he's in caster form, you want to try to juggle him on the ground. If you juggle him on the railing too fast, he ends up bugging out and running between the railing and the ground. So no matter which way you go, he'll run at you until... He gets far enough on the ground that he's not on the railing anymore. And if that happens, you're more likely than not getting both debuffs. So, so far I haven't gotten any debuffs, we're doing really well on health. So at this point, maybe that Greater Arcane Protection Potion I didn't need to pop beforehand. But, as I said before, it's definitely better safe than sorry. 
At this point, we're just making sure to keep the boss max range in caster form. We're going to start getting out Siphon Lifes on the Imps. We're doing pretty good on health and mana at the moment. With two Fell Lashes, the Greater Arcane Protection Potion gets used up pretty fast. And it's already gone. And they do a lot of damage, but there's so many Siphon Life targets that it ends up not being a problem. And it, it's really good if you can get a Banish on at least one of them. That way you're only taking damage from the one. I do end up getting a Wither, which is pretty bad. But since I got the Banish, we're actually going to take less damage than if I had left a Fell Lash up and I didn't get debuffed. And at this point, the boss is almost dead. We want to be really careful, though. We don't want to die. And... We need the Skull to come back up off cooldown, and we're still going to have to kill the Imp, so we're pretty much right on time. You want to make sure that during the fight, if your Skull has, you know, 30 seconds or less that you equip it, just so that you don't get screwed over later with the 30 second cooldown from putting it on, since we are going to need it. Try to get this Nightfall proc off, but he's just too far. And there he goes down. Now we're just going to clean up the imps. You want to be super safe at this point. Boss is dead. We're not in a rush. The Skull still has 50 seconds left. So we really just don't want to die at this point. So we're just going to get Siphon Lifes on anything we can. So we can stabilize again. We're just going to keep this guy banished while we clean up the imps. Still have around 20 seconds left before Skull, so imps are almost dead. We're looking good here. And I, I highly recommend you guys make a target macro for the minions. It gets really hard to target them when there's all the little lashers, the big lashers, the boss. Skull's ready, so we're going to jump from the ledge on here. And then we're just going to put on our offhand to cancel the damage debuff. You can have a cancel or a macro, but putting on another offhand does the same thing. Now we're going to start preparing for our next run. So we're going to life tap. We're going to make a health stone. We're trying to maximize efficiency per hour, not just for this one specific run. So as you see, boss died around 11, 11.30. And we evaded them out at about 12.20. Now we're just going to have to go mine. And our resources are looking good for next run. And just to show the healing. So I did pop two Greater Arcane Protection Potions. It only did 5k. So it's not something that you have to do. I would definitely recommend it for people learning. And if you have two or three Fell Lashes. If you have one, I don't ever use it. It's very safe. Especially if you already know how to do the boss regularly. And if you get triple melee, the fight is exactly the same as if you had no extra adds. Um, and just to show the damage breakdown, the Fell Lash, 12k. Boss only did 3k, Imps 2k. So as you can see, two casters is a lot more damage. And I also had one banish for at least, you know, a quarter of the fight. So you really want to be getting out Siphon Lifes. It's even more important than when you're just fighting Alzen himself. Something else that I didn't have here that you guys could have is Mighty Trolls Blood. It's just a little bit more health regen. It's nothing crazy. And they're very cheap. They're like 10 silver on my server. And while I'm showing gear in a second, I will show you another spot. You can evade him out if you mess up with the Skull. Or you don't have a skull. Uh, there's two options. The one I'm about to show you and another one. The other one is using the rock that we used to get on the ledge. And jumping from the rock with the swiftness potion onto the same pillar. It's a little harder because you have to get the angle right. But it's doable. I'd recommend the skull. It's just easier and it's free. And 
and I am pretty geared, so depending on your gear level, this might be easier or harder. You can opt if you have multiple fell lashes to kill one of them. It would obviously be slower, but it would still be much faster than the regular route, and it's a lot safer. And just to show you guys, you can use this root right here, jump on the root, and then jump on the pillar. It's a little more tricky, because it's right near where the mobs change from the ledge to the ground. So you're very prone to getting dazed, and if you get dazed while you're trying to jump, you're obviously not going to make it, and you're probably just going to die. So I really don't recommend doing this, but it's more of a backup. And it's much closer than trying to get to the large ledge outside of the boss's area. You can try to outrun the mobs there, but without a speed item, I, I don't know if you'd make it. But yeah, that's it guys. Thanks for watching. If you liked it, leave a like, subscribe. I'll be making more content, mostly focused on Warlock. And I will start streaming soon at twitch.tv slash LuffyWow. Happy gold hunting, boys.